Schumann's Second Symphony is, is a work that I could talk about forever. I'll try not to right now. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a piece that I think is a real confessional for Schumann. And it, it, it contains three elements. There's the spiritual ideal, which is represented always by the brass. There's the feminine ideal, which is represented by the winds. And there's Schumann himself, which is represented by the strings. And these three elements are constantly swirling around in the piece. And it's, it's, it's a fascinating piece. You can listen to it, obviously, it's just a straight piece of music. But if you start to go beneath the surface, you see that there's a kind of quest that Schumann is, is undertaking to try to find out how these things reconcile. The last movement is also divided into three parts. And interestingly, there, there are two big stops in the last movement. And the theme that comes after each stop is gradually transforming. And by the end, after the second stop in the third part of the movement, you get a direct quotation from Beethoven's song, An die ferne Geliebte, to the distant beloved. And finally, at the end of the symphony, it's as if he has found this distant beloved. And the feminine ideal and the spiritual ideal of the kind of church-like music that really harkens back to Bach and the Schumann music himself all come together in an amazing final glorious ending. It really tells a story, this piece, and it has to do with his, his quest for love, but also his struggle with composition. There, in the slow movement, the most, one of the most beautiful slow movements ever written in music, there's a section that is, sounds like it could have been written by Bach. And it's as if you feel Bach's shadow over Schumann, and he's trying to figure out how to deal with the, the challenge that Bach presents to all subsequent composers. Um, and this, this need to write perfect counterpoint, but also express this yearning song-like melody that Schumann obviously was so comfortable with. It's an amazing piece because all these elements come together and it's, it's, uh, if, if, you really, if you really start to look at it, I think you see that this piece is, is kind of an autobiography of Schumann. Um, the, re the reason to put Mozart and Weber in with it is that I think that, that Schumann, Schumann's music directly alludes to so many other types of music. And this particular piece um, does so even more strongly than other works of Schumann with the obviously old-fashioned old counterpoint of Bach, the sort of forward-looking melodic elements that, that I think Weber and picked up. The concert as a whole will, will present a kind of story that I think the audiences will, will understand. Um, very much in the way that the symphony itself is a microcosm of a, of a, of a series of stories.